The Merry Wives of Windsor is a fascinating play for exploring Shakespeare's life and times because there seems to be so much of Shakespeare himself in it. At the very beginning of the play, we meet Justice Shallow, a justice of the peace, a gentleman, rather a foolish gentleman, and he's come down from his own county of Gloucestershire to Windsor. Now Shakespeare Stratford is right on the border of Warwickshire and Gloucestershire, and in the opening sequence of the play, there's a fascinating reference to a local gentleman from Stratford itself. The play begins with Shallow in dispute with Sir John Falstaff, who's going to be the central figure in the play, the one who woos the Merry Wives of Windsor. But in introducing this dispute, Shakespeare brings in a lot of technical language to do with heraldry and coats of arms. Shallow describes himself as a gentleman born, armigero. Armigero means entitled to bear arms. To have a coat of arms meant that you were a gentleman. Now Shakespeare wasn't a gentleman. He came from a relatively lower middle class household. But in the course of the late 1590s, when he was writing The Merry Wives of Windsor, he spent a lot of try time trying to make himself into a gentleman. He applied for a coat of arms on behalf of his family. He was actually mocked for this by his fellow dramatist, Ben Jonson. There was quite a lot of gossip to the effect that Shakespeare was becoming a bit of a snob, wanting to be upwardly mobile. The discussion of the coat of arms in this opening sequence of The Merry Wives of Windsor then continues with references to Lucy's. We hear that Master Shallow's family have a dozen white Lucy's in their coat. And then there's talk of what a vintage pedigree they have and lots more technical language about the coat of arms. Now, a loose was a kind of fish. It was actually a pike. And there's some dialogue about freshwater fish and salt fish, sea fish. But then Parson Evans, who's going to be an important figure in the play, he's both a parson and a school teacher. He intervenes and he mistakes loose for louse. And there's a bit of an insult there. It's a play full of insults and banter. Now, for a long time, scholars have got very interested in this passage because there was a local gentleman at a place called Charlcott, just outside Stratford, called Sir Thomas Lucy. And indeed, there was an old story that the reason Shakespeare had to leave town was that he was poaching game from Lucy's deer park at Charlcott. Although some scholars have pointed out he didn't seem to have deer there, but there were other kinds of game as well. We don't know whether that story is true, but it's certainly the case that the Lucy coat of arms did have three loose, three pike in it. And we can see this in this wonderful big folio, William Dugdale's Antiquities of Warwickshire. Dugdale was one of those antiquarian gentlemen who went around churches copying out monuments, coats of arms, inscriptions on tombs. And here on page 400, we find from the local church at Charlcott, the coat of arms of the Lucy family with three loose in it. And I think whatever we think about the old Shakespeare was a poacher story, there's no doubt that the, there is a joke here at the expense of the Lucy family. Lucy, lousy, fish, lice. Now, in a way, the detail of this doesn't matter. An audience in the theatre today are not going to know all these details. But for us, it's an exchange that shows us a number of things. It shows us that Shakespeare is concerned about questions of class and status, whether or not you can call yourself a gentleman, whether you have a pedigree. His comedies are full of upward and downward mobility through the social scale. It also shows us how he picks up on the details of local life, how he translates Stratford, Warwickshire and Gloucestershire to Windsor. And above all, it shows us how he's interested in using particular things, particular jokes, images, stories, as a way of demonstrating how social relationships work. And that is what comedy is all about. 
relationships within families, between the sexes, and in communities. 